Howdy guys, welcome to another episode from The Foundry where I give monkey brain advice to DMs along with general tips and how to guys using my campaign as an example. Today we're going to be recording in a different area. Me and my girlfriend decided to go glamping for her birthday weekend and yeah. Today we'll be covering dinosaur encounters for use in tier 1 play. I'll be breaking it down from level 1 to level 5. These encounters are balanced using my balance methodology, which you can find in a different video. However, just as a quick brief, it is based off a party of four players, two of which are gonna be martial classes, and the other two are gonna be either caster or full caster, meaning at level one to three, they will have one action each or one attack, and at level five, they will have two actions for the martial classes for a total of six actions slash attacks at that point. The whole focus of this episode is gonna be using pure dinosaur encounters no um, like cavemen or reflavoring uh, tribal warriors as cavemen and things like that i'm trying to stick with pure dinosaur encounters if you want to throw that at the party i also try not to be redundant by going oh at higher levels you can just throw more of a lower level dinosaur at the party i'm trying to avoid that but in this video i go for more or less unique encounters at each level that you can throw at the party so for level one, there are a few different types of encounters you can throw at the party. I'll be breaking it down in uh, more challenging encounters, otherwise known as boss fights or deadly encounters, and then more normal encounters or the regular encounters that you can throw at the party a little bit more casually. So a deadly encounter that you can throw at the party at level one would be, you know, a singular Allosaur that they uh, chance upon. Allosaurs are kind of like T-Rex light, if you want because they are challenge rating two, they don't hit anywhere near as hard, but they're just as scary. Another example for a more deadly encounter for the party would be if they're along the waterfront at level one, or you know, on a beach or on the coast or along a river, uh, more or less like, not a small river, but like a deep, wider river, you can have a plesiosaurus fight. That's always fun to have some type of like water type encounters or something if they're decided to like hug the coast a little bit more in your campaign setting while a more regular encounter or an easier type of encounter for a level one party you could throw uh three pterodons that shouldn't be too difficult for the party they will be using their flyby ability so you can really just have fun where they're navigating through the forest or the jungle and as they enter a small clearing the pterodons come down and start attacking and pecking at them or potentially if you have any uh, gnomes or halflings, so the smaller players in your party, the pterodons would be trying to come up, lift those smaller players up off the ground and drop them from heights, which is always fun. Another thing you could do is using two, I think it's pronounced dimatrons or dime tro dime trodons. <laughs> those are another fun one. They are the dinosaurs with like the uh, sail fin on their back while being on all fours on the ground. So these oversized lizards could be fun to have them, you know, sneak up on the party or, you know, perousing the uh, forest or jungle ground and the party chances upon them. Another fun one, if you want something a little bit quicker or a little bit more chasey or something to like chase the party down, you can use four fastiates. They have an ability that lets them just dash around really quickly around in the forest and attack the party uh, with their 40 foot movement speed and such. And that could be really exciting. Just, you know, as the party is exploring, just for them to hear something moving at them quickly and chasing them down. And I'm trying to run away from that. Or chase after them, if that's what the party is doing. If they're trying to collect them by chance. Now for level two, things can get a little bit more spicy. You can now throw two clawfoots at the party. They're kind of, I forget which dinosaur they're supposed to be like a reskin, but like buffed up a little bit of. You can kind of describe them how you want. You don't have to use how they're described in the source book. You know, it's your game. Do whatever you want, call them clawfoots. And they can be fairly exciting as a more deadly encounter for level two players. While if you want to instead use a more singular deadly encounter type idea, you can have to run into a stegosaurus, you know, 
this giant massive dinosaur they're like oh shit and they have to just really wail on it as it's not it doesn't have a very high ac but it has a pretty like meaty hit point pool that it should pose a fairly challenging fight for the group to try to surround and beat down while a more regular encounter for level two players would be more akin to my personal favorite of four velociraptors and using them to really hunt and tear the party apart you know really play out those jurassic park scenes with the velociraptors where they're just moving as this perfect kill squad unit diving in and out of the party um, i have another video where i go over different ways that you can use raptors and why i think they're so great at low levels without even having to homebrew them all too much i personally like the idea of homebrewing them with either 40 foot movement speed or giving them disengage as a bonus action so they can really just swerve in and out of the party and really hunt them down another fun one for a regular encounter for a level two party if you were using pterodons in the earlier at level one or really want to introduce more flyers into the campaign you know you can use the quetzal i think the full name is like quetzalcoccus or something but the Quetzal is like a giant, a massive uh, pterodon pretty much. And that one can really swoop down, pick the party up and just dive bomb, drop them onto the ground or just really swoop around. You know, they could be navigating through the forest and then all of a sudden just a sh large shadow overtakes them. They're like, what happened to the light? They look up and they just see this massive beast out there. You can then also do for heart i think it's pronounced hadrosaurus those can be fun if i remember correctly i think that is the uh like kind of duck build dinosaur think of ducky from the land before time i think that's what it's supposed to be but that one's another fun one you know it's kind of derpy looking but it can they can just pack a wallop you know they're they have enough health that you know if this group of four they can really just beat on the party with their you know raw body size now level three things pick up a little bit more because now every single player has gotten their subs class and they've gotten their class features or at least their first set of class features so that's a pretty good power jump for the party here is when you can start introducing the much bigger dinosaurs for them to fight regular encounters for level three aren't going to be too much more different than level one and two except for increasing the numbers there i would hesitate on doing any increase in numbers for the uh deadly encounters but you can definitely use them again as regular encounters for level three but the real thing is now the deadly encounters for level three can really be ramped up a little bit more you can have them run into some roman brontosauruses and just have that massive mini slap down like oh shit you know it's just massive creature and they can do some pretty wicked damage for how large they are or really just take a beating if the party is surrounding them and trying to attack it again i would hesitate about against using more than one of them to stay and fight the party at this level because they really just have such a massive hit pool with their range that they can just deal massive amounts of damage and easily lead to a tpk but you know have a whole herd of these brontosauruses that are kind of going minding their own business in the party you know if they want to attack it they attack it and only that singular one attacks while the other ones you know try to run away or something else scares them into running away that way you don't completely just annihilate the party <laughs> with these massive dinosaurs uh, another fun one if you want to bring the sc uh, scale down a little bit and still kind of keep that one-on-one -on -one or one-on-four type of environment use the triceratops those are always fun the idea of you know them kind of chasing down or fighting down this giant triceratops you know dinosaur rhinoceros pretty much and just have fun with that definitely use its charge and trample or trampling charge against the party but be careful though because after it tramples the party it will be able to stomp on them and that can just almost immediately wipe one player out so it's going to really force the party to you know kind of do this split maneuver or really just focus in and protect their tank another fun one you could do as a deadly encounter and this is where you have a few variations if you are doing a more jurassic park type theme that's trying to add a little twist of necromancy in it you can do the zombie variant of the ankylosauruses two of them to be exact or if you were doing you know, a full life campaign, you can just do uh, the regular Ankylosaurus. 
two of these, you know, hammer-tailed bad boys are gonna easily just start smashing apart, you know, the paladin shield or, you know, the fighter shield and just really be knocking them around. And that could be a lot of fun as they're, you know, kind of bashing the party around with rocks and things like that or smash them into rocks. Uh, obviously, if you want to kind of go with a little bit more of a necromantic or undead route, you could easily just reflavor a lot of these other stat blocks as, you know, skeleton versions of the creature. There are plenty of templates out there that you can find homebrew style where they go, oh, if you really want to like reflavor or like adapt a monster as an undead, those are available. However, you could just simply just go, it's a skeleton and give it the exact same stat blocks. Maybe give it undead fortitude if you wanted that other undead or other zombies and skeletons have. And, you know, give them that blunt damage uh, vulnerability that most skeleton creatures have if you want to go down that type of route. Level 4, things pick up a little bit more with players now having access to their ASI or a new feat. It isn't as major a power jump because even if they were to take things like Great Weapon Master or Sharpshooter, that increase in 10 damage can be completely like encounter breaking, except for the fact that their hit chance is so low still at this point that that minus five is gonna really balance that out. So that's not something we really need to worry about. So for level four, this is when we can start to introduce the last few remaining dinosaur stat blocks that are presented in all the source materials, you know, all the official source materials out there. We can either do the regular T-Rex, or if, we, as I said earlier, if, we're, if you're doing the kind of more undead necromatic form of dinosaurs, you can use the zombie variant of the T-Rex as, you know, a deadly encounter for the party. Really just, you know, have that apex predator feel to it. You know, maybe they are fighting some triceratops or, you know, a small batch of velociraptors and one or two rounds into that combat, the roar. You know, the dinosaurs all stop and they look away and like, oh shit, you know, silence. You know, all the birds in the forest or in the jungle completely go silent as they're fighting in the first two rounds. Or, you know, if they're by a pool of water, have that scene from Jurassic Park where like, it's like the boom and the water ripples are like, oh shit, what is that? You know, you can do so many things to foreshadow like the T-Rex encounter that they're either about to go into or is about to surprise them and just have so much fun with the T-Rexes. Now, level five is uh, the last major power jump in players. Uh, this is when martial classes get their second attack and spellcasters get access to third level spells like fireball and half caster getting um, access to second level spells. As I said, there isn't too many dinosaurs in official D&D. So the last major dinosaur you could really have would be the uh, King of Feathers. This is from, I think it's the Tome of Annihilation source book. And it's pretty much an amped up T-Rex that has a summon swarm ability where it can summon a swarm of insects which will help balance out a little bit of the action economy that's going on at this level or at this state and it will really just amp up the difficulty because it now has i think almost 200 hp and these giant insects can really deal some serious damage and just keep the party busy while he's rampaging about if you have things like the the tome of beasts there are a few more dinosaurs that you can find in that source book um, I won't link those or put those stat blocks on screen just because not everyone has access to that or will be going out of the way to try to purchase or find this PDF or physical book. But there are easily tons of homebrew stat blocks you can find for other dinosaurs to implement them into your campaign. Uh, I know fun ones for me that I like to look at are, you know, some people have ported over the Monster Hunter monsters. Um, a lot of those look like dinosaurs or like are kind of dinosaur-esque in them in their nature or their look and just really just throwing those stat blocks that these people have you know somehow miraculously like homebrewed into fifth edition and throwing those at the party if you want to add more flavor or more variety however you can also just simply google whatever type of dinosaur you want D D 5e you know homebrew and more like than not someone has created a stat block for that if you don't want to create one yourself. If you are trying to create one yourself, a simple tip that I would say is take one of the base ones that already exists, like the Allosaur, if you want something a little bit more like 
carnivore pack leader alpha type like that and keep it low level and just maybe increase the stats a little bit or keep the same stats but just change the damage change the attack type to better fit again DD is all about reskinning and reflavoring but yeah that's it for a jurassic or dinosaur based type campaign they're in my opinion very exciting very underutilized creatures in DD. i think because they break so much of the immersion of it all but i still think they have their place in it in any campaign that's like traveling through the uh, forest or jungle that is set in like the normal fantasy world type or you know timeline yeah hope you guys found that helpful and enjoyable and i will see you guys next time